Now, there's absolutely no question that the San Francisco 49ers made a significant statement last offseason. What was that significant statement? Was that they looked at their roster and realized that Jimmy G ain't that dude for the long term. And that they needed to, in the 2021 draft, come away with that guy that could be the answer at the quarterback position, be the franchise guy for San Francisco for the long term. Which is what led to them making the big move up the board to ultimately get into position to have that third overall pick and draft Trey Lance from North Dakota State. And that's a pretty big statement. When you're talking about a team that's a year removed from making it to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G as a quarterback, they're, they're telling you all you need to know. Like a Mahomes type of move in terms of what the Chiefs did back a few years ago in that 2017 draft when they moved up from the mid-20s to get to 10 to take Mahomes. They were saying, yeah, Alex Smith might be okay, but okay ain't good enough. We got to have better at the position, and this guy has got the type of skills that could be special. The 49ers clearly making a similar type of statement. Now, there was certainly plenty of buzz beforehand once the 49ers got to that position to get that third overall pick of whether they were going to really take Trey Lance or whether they were going to take Mac Jones. And look, if you were looking just strictly to play the guy right away and who might be better in 2021, you might take Mac Jones there. But you don't give up what the 49ers did to take a guy with limited physical tools or limited physical upside. Like, you have to gamble. Like, if you're already gambling, you might as well go big. You're swinging for the fences there. So, once you make that move, you're making that statement that you know that Jimmy G is not the guy. And we all know this. So, why belabor the point? Why stubbornly insist on having to be a Jimmy G-led team most of the year, all of the year? Why do that? For some reason, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch just can't quit this fucking dude. It's ridiculous. They just can't quit Jimmy G. And no, I'm not saying he's terrible. He's not terrible. He's good. He's just only good, though. And in today's NFL, you can't win with a just good quarterback when it really matters. Because you could have a well-balanced team around him. You could have a defense that plays some dominant football in key stretches, weapons that step up like George Kittle and Debo, Debo Samuel that make big plays in big spots. But at some point in time, you have to have a quarterback that can put the team on his back. And whenever it gets to that time for the San Francisco 49ers, they are fucked. Period. Plain and simple. I mean, sure, the 49ers won 10 games and they made the playoffs. Even though you could have argued, well, that's a whole lot of thanks to the damn Rams for choking the game away late in the year. And you could say, hey, they won in Dallas in the wild card round. Then they went up to Lambeau and beat the Packers in the divisional round. And they had the Rams on the ropes. They did. And all of that is absolutely true. However, you had to know at some point in time that reality was going to come crashing down on this 49ers team. And all this season was, ultimately, was one gigantic waste of time. Gigantic waste of time of time. You could have utilized this entire season to see what you had in Trey Lance, to let Trey Lance develop on the field. Well, he's not ready. How much worse could he really have fucking been if he got a chance to actually stick in there and start and play the entire season? Come on. How much worse was he really going to be? Because in big spots and big moments, the best thing about Jimmy G is his handoff game. Is Trey Lance's handoff game that far inferior to frickin' Jimmy Garbage Pail? Are you fucking kidding me? Trey Lance's arm talent is certainly much better, and his athletic ability is certainly much better. Imagine what the 49ers could have been done, been doing come playoff time with that offense if you had a quarterback with a superior arm and better athletic ability and mobility. What could they have done? Would it really have been any worse? So you basically wasted Trey Lance's rookie season to give Jimmy G one more shot for nothing. And you're going to say, well, they made it to the NFC Championship game and they got damn close a few minutes away from the Super Bowl, but they didn't make it. So it's a wasted fucking season. I just don't get the thought process or philosophy. Like, even if you want to point to them winning games in the playoffs... It's not like Jimmy G was great in the freaking wild card game. 
and he was pretty bad in the damn divisional round against Green Bay. Would he really have been any better than Trey Lance? Was he really? Could Trey Lance really have done much worse? I mean, honestly, seriously. Now, sure, the 49ers' offensive statistics look solid. They were 8th in the league in total yards and 13th in points scored, 7th in rushing, 12th in passing. But sometimes the statistics can be misleading. When it gets down to nut-cutting time, you just don't have a quarterback right now in San Francisco that's getting the playing time that can take you where you need to go. Which is a real waste because you wasted another great season by this 49ers defense. They were third in total yards allowed, six versus the pass, seventh against the run, ninth in points allowed, top five in the league in sacks. And you saw this unit, that defense was playing at a damn Super Bowl level in the playoffs because they were getting after it. They were getting in the quarterback's faces. The Rams struggled with it. The Packers struggled with it. The Cowboys struggled with it. That poor 49ers pass rush was the difference. If they had a quarterback that could have made a couple of big plays in the game, they could have went to the Super Bowl. And who knows what the fuck would have happened once you got there. But instead, nope. Just had to ride with Jimmy G one more time, waste the fucking season. And when it came down to brass tacks against the Rams in the NFC Championship game, the 49ers, a team that had beaten the Rams twice during the regular season, came up short. Imagine my surprise. So now you go into the offseason, you have to get under the salary cap, and who knows what the hell they're going to do with Jimmy G. Obviously, he can't be the starter again in 2022. That would be moronic to do so. But are they just going to end up releasing him? Because that's part of the reason they're over the salary cap, because they're carrying all Jimmy G's uh, remaining deal. But there's almost no dead cap associated. Or are they going to sit back and wait and try and see if they could get some type of trade value between now and the NFL draft to recoup some picks that they lost in moving up for Trey Lance? by dealing away Jimmy G. That's probably the best move they can make at this point. But they gotta do it. They need to get under the cap, you know, and see what they can do in terms of their free agents. Um, but like I said, it was just, I get like you get caught up in the moment if you're a fan, you want your team to do well, and you see them, oh man, NFC Championship game is hardly a wasted season. But now you're just basically starting over again next year with Trey Lance, and you don't know what the fuck you have in him. Like, you have to play the long-term game here. And let's say the 49ers did miss the playoffs, but Trey Lance showed you something that is infinitely more valuable than an NFC Championship game appearance where Jimmy G ultimately did Jimmy G things when it came down to the Jimmy goddamn time of the game. And then you don't know what the fuck you've got in Trey Lance. That's stupid. That's what moronic organizations do. And I would have expected better out of the 49ers. Now, heading into this offseason, obviously they don't have the first round pick, but they need to put some weapons and put some pieces on offense around Trey Lance. They need a right guard. Probably need multiple guards now if Lake and Tomlinson's going to be gone. I still think they could use a second tight end because, you know, you get the inevitable George Kittle injury where he misses a couple of games or half the season, so you don't want your offense to totally screech to a halt. And imagine what this offense could do with some two tight end looks. You know, you could use another wide receiver. Sure, Debo is a fantastic player, and Ayuk is coming along, but you'd like to have another guy, maybe not count on Travis Benjamin as your wide receiver three. You know, the 49ers, like, I'd say, you better hope Trey Lance can develop into that dude. Because if he can, this 49ers team could be really intriguing the next few years. But goddamn, what an ultimately lost opportunity and waste of a damn season this was. Go cry about it in the mirror.